Ever since premenstrual symptoms were first formally described in 1931, there has been a sexist historical assumption referred to as the myth of the irrational female, which was an idea that women are pathologically emotional and therefore have a reduced capacity for reason due to their reproductive biology, which is absolutely false. This video not only explains the history of PMS, but also describes the etiology, diagnosis, and the treatment for PMS. We'll also be mentioning a few self-care tips for women going through PMS at the end of this video, so make sure you watch till the end. Premenstrual syndrome is a disruptive set of emotional and physical symptoms that occur one to two weeks before the start of each menstrual period, typically during the luteal phase. It occurs in the late 20s and early 40s, and symptoms usually resolve around the time menstrual bleeding begins. It is estimated that three out of every four menstruating women have experienced some form of PMS. Premenstrual dysphoric disorder, or PMDD, is a more severe form of PMS, which we'll be discussing in a bit. Did you know that PMS was originally seen as an imagined disease? Women were told that it was all in their head. Robert Frank worked as a gynecologist in New York, and in a paper he published in 1931, he described a cluster of symptoms that occurred before the onset of menstruation. He described the cluster as a common endocrine disorder, and he incorrectly hypothesized that the symptoms resulted from fluid retention caused by excess estrogen. And then came a woman to the rescue. In 1948, Dr. Katharina Dalton, a general physician in London, noticed that several of her female patients complained of recurring monthly ailments. She also noticed that the symptoms did not occur during pregnancy. She concluded that the recurring symptoms could have resulted from low levels of progesterone. She was the first person who coined the term premenstrual syndrome. So, what is up with the mood swings? Although researchers don't know exactly why PMS strikes, these emotional disturbances are thought to be connected to the hormonal peaks and valleys. Changes in estrogen and progesterone levels also influence serotonin levels. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter that helps regulate mood, sleep cycle, and appetite. Fluctuations in serotonin levels induce PMS symptoms. The symptoms of PMS and their intensity vary from individual to individual. However, common emotional and non-specific symptoms include stress and anxiety, insomnia, exhaustion, mood swings, and increased emotional sensitivity. Common physical symptoms include bloating, constipation, lower back pain, headaches and migraines, breast tenderness or swelling, joint and muscle pain, and acne flare-ups. No unique lab test exists to diagnose PMS. Your physician might ask you to journal your symptoms for at least two menstrual cycles to establish a premenstrual pattern. You'll be asked to note the day the symptoms appear, the day the symptoms disappear, and also the days your period starts and ends. Your doctor may ask you for any family history of depression or mood disorders to determine whether your symptoms are linked to PMS or to any other condition. A number of pre-existing medical conditions may become worse at menstruation. This is called menstrual exacerbation or premenstrual magnification and must be ruled out. The underlying medical disorders that could incorrectly be diagnosed as PMS include anemia, hypothyroidism, eating disorders, and so on. So how is premenstrual syndrome different from premenstrual dysphoric disorder? Well, PMS affects 75% of menstruating women, whereas PMDD affects 3-8% to of menstruating women. PMS involves milder symptoms like fatigue and exhaustion, whereas PMDD usually leads to insomnia or difficulty staying asleep. PMS involves feelings of sadness and anxiety, whereas PMDD leads to extreme hopelessness, grief, and anxiety. PMS doesn't involve suicidal thoughts, whereas PMDD does. PMS affects usual routine, whereas PMDD affects work routine, relationships, and hobbies. 
Lifestyle changes may be enough to relieve symptoms in certain individuals. These include 8 hours of sleep, exercise, drinking plenty of fluids, and taking supplements such as folic acid, vitamin B6, calcium, and magnesium. Certain individuals, however, may require medications, which include antidepressants, such as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, like venlafaxine, floxidine, and sertraline, to reduce mood symptoms. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen or naproxen to ease cramping. Hormonal contraceptives to stop ovulation and relieve PMS symptoms. It is so important to make yourself a priority when experiencing PMS. Here are a few self-care tips. Eat what makes you happy. Hot showers or bubble baths can help you relax. Breathing exercises, journaling, and light stretches can help with anxiety and stress associated with PMS. It is important to get 8 hours of sleep. Enjoy a cup of nice hot chocolate or watch your favorite movie. And don't forget to ignore the people who call you overdramatic when you're experiencing PMS.